How's it guys and welcome to Get Into Grips brought to you by Godox SA. So today I thought I'll start this episode off with something I always get through on emails, WhatsApps and all sorts of other messaging um, platforms. How do I start doing studio? And so one question I ask the guys is, well, what gear do you actually have? Obviously they tell me they got a camera, they got the lenses, they have a speed light but they just don't know what to, what to do to even start. So I said, well, what is holding you back? You have a speed light. So today's show, I'm gonna be doing a lot of work with one speed light. So this is actually the manual flash. It is the TT600 flash that we're gonna be using this for most of the time, doing everything from low key to high key to some fashion shots and then also beauty headshots. So one flash, one modifier, we can do a lot of stuff with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and set this up and if there's anybody online, if you have any questions or just let us know where, you, where you're actually watching from or just say hi. We've got Talia, she's on the switcher and monitoring the comments. And so I'm gonna set this up quickly. So what I'm going to be doing is setting up on a C stand. I've actually got the Godox S2 bracket and all my flashes and stuff are still in boxes. So I like to look after my stuff. Right. So literally what I'm going to do is just put this inside the S2 bracket, screw down the thumbnail, not too tight because you don't want to crack or damage the plastic casing. So what modifier am I going to use with the flash? So what I'm going to do is I've actually chosen to use a strip box. So this is the Godox 30 by 120 strip box. It comes actually with a grid, which we're going to be using later on. But I'm going to take this off for now, so excuse the noise. Just, uh, ah, there you go. Right, so doing portraiture with a strip box. I don't know if anybody has tried it or anybody does it. I do it quite a bit. So with a strip box, some people think that this thing actually comes out just with this beam of light and, and that's it, very narrow. But actually this light comes out this way. So it comes out around about probably 160, 170 degrees outside of the soft box. So we get plenty of light spread and enough to actually get some nice shots in. Okay. So we've got the light, which is a speed light. We've got the modifier, got everything set up. All we need now is a model. And we have the awesome Jean-Marie joining us today. <laughs> so if you want to just go and stand up against the wall there. So literally some people would have obviously seen uh, Jean. We've been open window. We've been doing, she's actually appeared in some of our workshops. So we've got to work quite a bit together. So we sort of now starting to gel and, and relax in, our, in the shoots. Right, so what are we going to do? We're going to put this into a standard position. Any questions? Anyone watching? Anybody saying hi? <laughs> Is anybody out there? Yeah. How's it, guys? Hello, hello. Right, so literally we're going to start off with the softbox in a 45 degree angle, pointing at the model. She's right up against the wall. So what I expect to see here is lit this side, shadow this side, and shadow on the wall. So some people say they don't like shadows on the wall, but sometimes it can look pretty cool. It will be a softer shadow due to the fact that we're using a softbox. Okay, so I'm going to get this into the position I want it. All right, I'm going to actually take a shot just to show you exactly what we're getting. And I think, is my camera picked up there, Talia? 
Just bring that across. Right. So the first shot I always do, I call it my black canvas. So literally I take a shot without the flash on. So I'm not going to be, I know that these lights that we've got in studio that is lighting us up for the video is not actually going to affect anything I do on camera. So I often call it my black canvas because I'm painting with light using my camera and obviously the power of the light. So that's why I call it a black canvas. So I'm going to take that shot. My camera settings, for those who like to know these things, in my environment, I'm shooting with the Canon 6D, 100 ISO, f8 on the aperture, and 160th of a second, which is my camera's maximum sync speed. And that is what I'm going to be shooting at. So let me turn this head around. Right, just a test shot quickly. And that's probably one of the most important shots I'm going to do of today. And it should be black. So literally now, I know exactly what I'm going to be doing now because whatever light I switch on and whatever power I set to that light is what is going to be lit up in the shot. So are we ready? Let's take another <laughs> shot. Okay, so let's put the flash on. And I'm going to shoot this at... Let's see where we are. We're sitting at half. There you go. So that's the first shot. I think it comes in a bit slow on the on the thing. So there we have a shot. One, one speed light, one softbox, and we're already, I think we're done. I think we can go home now. We've got the, the shot. <laughs> okay, so literally what we're going to do is we're going to obviously build on this. So we're going to actually look at, okay, so we now got this white wall. We've got this shadow here. How do I get rid of the shadow on the actual image. So there's one quick fix that we can do for that. Is there any questions there, Tommy? Any Not questions yet. yet? Not yet. Cool. Everybody's everybody's too clever for the shot. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually ask Jean Marie just to move forward to about here. Just come here. Okay. Then I'm gonna carefully move the softbox. <laughs> So I don't clap you. All right. So let's just get it roughly the same distance that we were from the wall. So I'm going to step behind Anna Marie here. So literally now the light's actually going to hit Anna Marie. It's not going to go directly behind her onto the wall because it's going to follow through and the shadow should appear somewhere, somewhere down here. I was on the right camera there. Could you see me? All right. So I'm going to take a shot here. It has moved across right down onto the bottom. What's the question? Have we got no question? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you're just giving people shout outs. That's cool. All right. Let's take another shot. Look towards the light. Well, oh, we got the flash because I'm going to wait for the flash to recycle. Okay, so literally now we've got rid of the shadow behind the model. So you can just see it's just off there. If we actually just move the light around a little bit, we could probably get that totally out of, out of frame. And even, don't be scared to move around when you are shooting. Just lift your chin slightly, just slightly up. That's cool. Okay. So that's actually quite a cool shot there when it comes up on, I think we're a couple of shots behind there, Talia. What is the question? question? What's the question? What is the size of the softbox? What is the size of the softbox? Okay, the softbox is a... 30 by 120 strip box uh, from Godox. And that one actually comes with a grid as well. So that's why I like to buy soft boxes that come with grids because I really like to use grids in small studio space. Okay. All right. 
So now we're going to look at probably trying something else. So what we're going to do is, what if we want to get the background darker and you've only got a small space, whether you're shooting in a, a like a home studio or a spare bedroom or whatever, you've got the white wall, but you don't have the space to move around, but you also don't have a black background. So we can actually darken the background by just moving the light. So literally we can start playing around with the light position by just Uh, another question. What is the question? The difference between that and an octo. Okay. So the, literally the octo box is, is literally a nice big round. It's going to wrap a lot of light around your subject. So the, the, the octo box, it's got a lot more spread. But it also, if you have it close to your subject, it'll actually wrap around your subject more than what a, a strip box would do. The strip box is literally coming out like this. Your octobox is coming out like big open arms and wrapping light around your subject. So is that answered? Cool. So what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is just get this. So we're just actually feathering the light. So if we are we on this camera here? So literally the soft box is actually pointing away from Jean Marie. So literally, I'm expecting the light spread to come out, feather across her face, and still be able to light her up. So we'll have much more light, obviously, on this side than we are on this side. But we can sort that out just now with the with the reflector. So let's take a shot. Any more questions? Right. I'm just going to focus the and. You can see the background is a lot darker once the image comes up. So now we've got a darker image on the background, and you'll see that we've actually got a gradient. Now I'm going to explain how that light works with a gradient. So if you imagine we've got one light, we're lighting the background, and we're lighting our, our subject. So if you just switch to the other camera here, Tanya. So I'm going to stand behind. All right. So if I actually stand here behind the actual softbox, I cannot see any of the white of the softbox. If I stand here, I still cannot see any of the white by the softbox. So I know the light is not going to hit this section of the wall. If I stand here behind Anna Marie or just, just off center of her, I can start seeing the light white on the strip box. So I know that the light is going to now start coming and hitting the wall this side. So it will be dark, coming across gradiently, and there. So you'll get the gradation on the back, and that's what we saw with this image just now. So I'm going to take another couple of shots like this. Uh, just make sure, because I'm with the light, I'm just going to wait for it to come back in. And so there's that gradation that we've got on the back. So it's darker and lighter. Any questions about that at all? Before I, not yet. Hey? Okay. Okay, so that's great. We can work with this light. We're working still with only one speed light. If we want to create a bit more drama in the actual image, what can we actually do? So I'm going to leave the, the softbox in that same position. I'm going to actually bring the power down to probably one stop, just to see what we've got there. So there you can see we're getting a bit more drama in the image as we work down and we start there in the background starting to come out quite nicely. I'm going to do a close head shot. Just look towards the light. So we're getting there. 
So if there's no questions, I'm going to just sort of say, so what if now we wanted to make this pure black or very close to pure black without really moving the model or moving the softbox? I'm going to put that out there as a question. Maybe anybody out there in the comment, just write how we're going to actually control the light even more on this softbox and to make the background go even darker than it actually is in the last shot. Anybody? Anybody? Before I go and get what I need to get. Anybody? Is anybody still out there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is. It is the it is the inverse square law because that's literally what's happening. Is light hits the model, sharp fall off, closer to the soft box, sharper the fall off. So that does that is what's happening right now at the moment. As we've moved the model around, moved her away, moved the light away. So literally, there we're creating that background to go dark. But my favorite little tools, and it should be for anyone with a small studio, are these. These are absolutely awesome because it gives you, the photographer, the total light control freak, the best control that you can have on a softbox. Did I just say control freak? No, I'm not a control yeah. freak. <laughs> <laughs> I just like controlling light that's that's all I like to control okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go behind uh, Sean Marie again Talia so if you want to just get the other camera on same again can't see the light as I move past I cannot see the light I still can't see the light here okay got a question okay. Would you need to put an extra soft box on her left to get rid of the shadows on her left side, or did I miss something? No. So obviously shadows are going to be very much, so we're on this camera here. So shadows are obviously going to be very much what you actually want to do. If I want to actually lift the shadow on that side, I would actually put a board a reflector board that side because remember today is all about using one speed light what can you actually do with one single light so i can actually do that just now i'm going to actually put this grid on get the background dark so now literally we're going to have dark shadow on the one side and we're going to have a dark background and then i'll bring in a board so we can just bounce a bit of light off just to lighten that side of, of the face so you didn't miss anything um, a lot of people like shadow some people just like to lift it a bit, and we can do that by using a reflector board. So we're going to do that just now. Okay, so you're ready for another shot. Did that answer the question? Cool. All right. Okay, I'm just going to do another shot here. And now we should have a black background a black everything is in the shadows so we're really doing sort of low key low key stuff here and normally what i do do what i normally do do sounds like do do okay so what i normally do is actually if i'm putting a grid on i will actually adjust the light to probably come up a stop so where I was on a quarter power, I'm going to come up to half power because I also want to make sure there's going to be enough light hitting the board into the into the side of the face. So if you can look there again. So if you see that shot, we've got the dark background just by putting a, a reflector board, just bring that up, by just putting the reflector there, it's just a piece of poly board from from the hardware. One side is black, one side is white. So if you bring it across there, you can see that she's actually jammed in between these two things. I'm going to just take a couple more shots like this. Okay. And oh, flash didn't do off because I got to wait for the speed light. 
I'm so used to using my 8300s. <laughs> but there you go. So I think wait for that one to come in. So there you go. So you've literally got your three quarter shot. And you can see how much light is actually bouncing back in on the actual hip of, of Jean Marie. So there we can actually see, wow, we've got some really cool shots on using one single softbox. Which camera are we on, Talia? Third one. Okay. So you can actually do some real core shots using a reflector, strip box, grid. And we're in such a small space. Literally, I can do this in a 3 by 3 or a 2.5 by 2.5 space and be able to control the light. Okay. So let's try something different. Okay. Oh, All right. <laughs> right. I'm just going to put this reflector board back. Camera. What camera am I going to be on? Okay. So what I'm going to do is this is the standard sort of way of using a strip box or a soft box, putting it in front of your model 45 and moving it around, getting your Rembrandts, getting your loop lights, getting all that type of stuff. But say you want to do something different. So if we actually look at turning our soft box horizontally, I'm just going to put this. So if you want to step back to the wall, John Marie, yes. careful. I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to bring this up and make sure we've got some light coming your way. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is this is a good opportunity to actually do a wide shot to actually show you, even with a grid on, how wide the light actually spreads outside of a strip box. So I'm going to take a shot of a wide sort of angle, just to make sure we've got... Okay. So if you actually look at that shot, you can see how the... Still coming up on the screen. Okay, cool. So if you have a look at that shot, you can see how the, the grid actually narrows it a bit, but then it just spreads out. So you can imagine what light comes out of this box without a grid on. But that's the type of spread that a strip box actually has, which is which I think amazes some people, but I always find it interesting. So let me take a shot here so we can come back. I'm gonna take So this is all nice shadow work. Turn your head towards the light. I'm just going to do a portrait one. Okay. Oh, did that? Did that actually? That's the beauty of running Windows and Lightroom. <laughs> so I think a couple of the images after that one, Tali. Can you click on them or are they all there? That's fine. All right, so I'm going to do a couple of more images with this one just to make sure it comes up on the screen so you guys can see without Windows deciding to crash on me. Okay. And, oh, got to wait for the flash. Okay. And I even put new batteries in. And that's a smile. Give me a serious look. We're in shadows. Okay. Lift your chin slightly. I just wait for the speed light to come in. Just lift your head a bit more up. Okay. So that gives a different look. Um, literally also working in a lot of shadows and the same thing again, you can actually bring in your reflector. And the nice thing about this, you can almost create, you can almost create like a corner of a, of a room and, and work with it. So it's, and a lot of this really is down to experimenting. Once you do start, okay, question. Oh, this camera up here. Okay, sorry, Mr. Director. <laughs> so working with um, 
soft boxes and speed lights and just trying out the different things. Then you can start experimenting. Put a reflector right up against the wall, make it look like a corner of a room, let the light hit it, create all those shadows, because it really is cool. I love creating a lot of shadow in the images. And I'm just going to take a shot. Let's see. So it just adds a bit of bounce of light back into the camera. I think there's one still coming. Yeah. So it just fills the light just putting the reflector behind the model. And this is a speed light. This is not even, I haven't even got to the 8300 yet. <laughs> so working low key, working with one softbox, working with a speed light, you can do so much in studio. It's actually frightening. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up almost like a beauty shot for with one speed light and one modifier. I'm going to use a 55 centimeter beauty dish and we're going to make Jean-Marie even more beautiful. Huh? <laughs> so do you want to just step out of there so I don't hit you with anything? Always look after your model. Don't clop it with a softbox. Okay. Right. Any questions before I'm busy changing this? Any questions there, Tanya? Okay. So this is probably a modifier that not everybody will have but they are not expensive, okay? They actually work wonderful. So I'm just going to put this in onto the Bowens mount on the S2 bracket. Okay. So let's get this one into position. Right, Jean-Marie, do you want to just step up against the wall there? I'm going to now take this one out the way. Right, just want to get this in the middle, which is cool. Now, obviously, when you do use your boom arms, make sure that you do have weights. I've got weights inside the inside these bags, and uh, they actually keep everything stable, especially when using the boom arm. All right, are we in the middle there? All right. So. We're almost getting to the point where it's one of my favorite lighting setups, which is actually the clam lighting. But we won't use two lights. We're going to use a reflector board. But I'm going to take a shot just with the beauty dish above. So we'll almost get the shadows underneath and the shadows under the nose, very similar to a butterfly type of um, shot. All right. Obviously, we will adjust the light. Um, as you notice, I don't use a light meter. I tend to sort of think, oh, okay, in studio, I work in here every day. I sort of get to know what power I need to be on. But I'm going to turn this down to probably one-eighth power and just see what happens with this one. To me, a bit underexposed, I think. Check on that image. Anybody? Um, Question, question, okay, camera, okay. That one I think is a bit underexposed for me. I don't, I like to be. Uh, we're getting better there. Just keep your head straight. Okay, so we've got 
fairly decent exposure. I could probably go, I'll probably put it up just a little bit more on the power and uh, I'll probably go up two thirds. So we're keeping There you go, that's more what I like. So the next one that's gonna come up here, you'll see, hopefully, sure. It's taking a long time to load up on the screen. There you go. So literally we've got quite nice, bright shot. Why is there feedback? Why is there feedback? Okay, I'm just going to mute the mic. No, I think there's feedback on the microphone. So just uh, mute the mic a minute. Camera four is frozen. Camera four, which one's camera four? Uh, Technical, okay. Technical hitches. It had to happen on a live show. My mic is back on. I think my mic is back on. Just check if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Just here. I can see this going out. No, that one is on. I can see that I'm going out. So. Sorry about that, live, these things happen. <laughs> Am I on mute? No, I'm on, no, but I think your earphones are disconnected. <laughs> Sorry about that, so literally let me get back to where we were. So we had a shot and that's the type of sort of exposure I like to see on a, on a beauty shot. What I can do now is actually just move a reflector board in and just kick up some light from here just to lighten up under the chin under the nose and we can go on from there why our tv director is sorting out <laughs> the, the technical the technical where uh, glitches that happen on live shows these are just these type of things but I'm gonna lift this quite high and I'm gonna bring it quite in because I really wanna put some light in. Okay. All right, so which camera am I on, Talia? This one, okay. <laughs> no, I'm not on that camera, I'm not on that camera. Yes, I am. All right, so I'm on this camera, so let me just go ahead. So we've got the reflector board. I wouldn't be live if this stuff didn't happen. <laughs> and that's the beauty of it. So we've got the reflector board, light hits this, bounces up underneath the chin, and we should get some nice, clean beauty shots with a flash, with a speed light. There you go. I just bring the screen across for the lightroom there and there you go so it's loading there's your shadow it's been filled it's a nice bright exposure so i'm going to take a couple of more shots like this play with your earrings play with your necklaces let's do okay i'm just going to wait for the speed light to kick in any questions Any questions while we're busy shooting it? These images are very cool. I like them. But it's obviously all to do with the model. No. No. <laughs> so there you go. You can actually do beauty with a speed light. One single speed light, piece of foam board from an art shop, sitting on a stand from Golden Power Batteries and a, and a boom arm, reflector boom arm from Godox. And... Voila, you've got a, a nice beauty shot and we can 
Now I'll move on to another thing we can do with a speed light. And it's probably something that a lot of people won't even think of doing. I mean, I'm playing around with some hard light now, so it's literally really going to be quite interesting this next shot. And let me move this out the way. Get this one. Just put that over there. Okay, I'm going to miss you with this one, so I'm not going to ask you to move. Keep, you can keep in that position. Any questions so far? Is anyone getting anything out of this? Is any, are people still watching? <laughs> Right, let's get that one on. Let's get this one off. All right. So, bear bulb flash. Let's see what we can do with a bear bulb flash in studio. And this is going to be quite cool. Any questions there? I hear noises coming in. Is everything still fine? Check your mic level. Check my mic level. Um, it should be on the receiver. Or you can put it up on the one, two. Oh, there's lots there. I'm in the red. Okay. So, bear bulb. Uh, we got another question. How do you determine the size of the dish? How do you determine the size of the dish? A live board a dish of every size. <laughs> so literally, with a with a beauty dish, the standard ones that I've used is the forty two centimeter and the fifty five or fifty five centimeter beauty dish. Those are the physical beauty dishes, the metal ones like these that you can actually get. You can actually get these from Godox and that is this size. So it's a 55 and a 42 centimeter. I also use my ADS 65W as a beauty dish as well. So that's a 65 centimeter um, that I've actually used in our beauty headshot workshops. So it doesn't matter what size beauty dish you have. Um, the 55 is generally a good one if you want a nice spread of light. Um, and then you can get grids for those as well. I've got a grid on my 42 centimeter, and I use that more for sort of a low key um, type imagery. So has that answered the question? Cool. All right. Uh, will I flag it in such a small pseudo space? Well, if I wanted to actually um, stop uh, some lights, say for instance, I've got something coming in to, from, from my windows I'm in the day and the sun's coming in. I wanted to control because remember the first shot I actually took was the shot where literally I saw nothing in the frame. So whatever light I'm shooting now, I want it to actually spread and I want it to spread wide and give a nice hard shadow and give a nice white wall as well. So this is going to be a typical type of, I suppose, like a fashion fashion type shot. Um, I also shoot bare bulb also with 8300, which I'm actually going to do that as well just now. I think this one is the last one, but I think with the speed light. So let's take a shot. So there's one thing about doing this type of shot with a speed light is I don't have a modeling lamp. So I can't sort of see where the shadow is going to, how far the shadow is going to come out. I just literally have to guess by position in the light and taking the shot. Okay, so let's do a shot here. So it almost mimics, bear bulb almost like mimics a sunlight. It's like that hard light that you're going to get through. And the, I think that's why I like shooting it sometimes in studio, especially up against the white wall, because it does give you that sunlight look, very sharp shadow. And I think they look quite cool. 
I think there's a lot of light that just blasts and makes Jean-Marie glow like an angel. <laughs> okay, let's take another couple of shots here. And also with doing these type of shots, the model can move around, spread our arms around the walls. Oh, gotta wait for the flash. The recycle time. Okay. So that's cool. It's like gives a nice gives a nice hard shadow. So one light, this is probably the easiest setup you can do, bare bulb and taking the shots and getting some great images out. I mean, this is a shot in camera. So Tali, do you want to put up camera fully there so people can see? So that's in camera. Literally, that is what you're getting. And I think it's great. I think it's a lot of fun doing this stuff. Experimenting. I can't express this probably anymore. Once you do start experimenting with a speed light, just go boss. Is that what they say? Boss? Just go absolute. Just try anything. <laughs> just do anything. Try different things. As creatives, we got to try these different things in our safe spaces. Try different things. Some things will work. Some things won't work. But that's all about the learning and how we grow. So I think that's fine for Mr. Speedlight. Any questions? And before I get the 8300 out. Oops. Any questions there, Tanya? Is everybody still fine? Everyone's still there? <laughs> Shame. Tanya has taken strain. It's the first time she's doing a live. And she's only been on training for about the last week. So, and it's in house training. So, well done, Talia on doing that okay so that's what we've been using that's what we've been using and it's done an amazing job i think it's done an amazing job right now mm -hmm. what would i say about the 8100 uh, the 80, the 8100, I don't have one myself, but I did use one the other day. Um, one of my students actually came through to studio with an 8100. Um, and he had his a V1 Pro and he had the 860 Mark III, I think. He wanted to find out if he could actually do e-commerce photography, pack shots. And we set it up and the 8100 actually did very well. I was very impressed with that light. Um, I, I was actually very surprised when, when I used it, <laughs> but my go-to lights are these, and I think Sherwin, even if he's online, 8300s, they rock, they really do rock, and that's what we're going to use now, I'm just going to move this one out the way, and here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> So literally, we're going to start off, we might as well start off with the bare bulb, 8300 Pro. And I think it says, oh, now we've got some light. See what difference a modeling light makes. So now I can see exactly where the shadow is going to be falling and makes my life a bit easier. Yes, question. The MS300s, it's... Find that the MS300 is uh, one that plugs into a wall. I've used all the um, battery powered AD series. So, literally, we've got I shoot on location, I shoot at offices, I shoot at all different places. And sometimes you don't know whether you're going to get a plug point or not. And literally, that's why I go for the AD series with the battery plugins. But I know a lot of people that use the MS300s and they are very happy with them. Um, I think a couple of photographer friends are little newborn newborn photographers. They use the MS300 actually in a 165 um, umbrella and they are very happy with, with that product. And uh, I haven't used one myself. 
I went straight into the AD series. So I hope that answered the question there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, obviously this is now 300 watts of power. I'm probably going to kick this one off at, oh, let's really blast, let's really blast you. Let's put it on quarter power. <laughs> we'll give you a suntan by the end of this one. There you go. Beautiful light. Ah, I love these 300. Because now I can really go and let the model really go. Okay. And then don't forget, you can actually move around. So if you want to actually move around in studio, position the light just to get those different. So I'm going to get more shadow on this side of the light than I was on the other side. But you're going to get beautiful light because Godox have beautiful light, no matter what you use. Okay, so that is the 8300 bare bulb. Uh, did you have the images up there? Just go back to that other image there, Tony. So look how, straight from camera, guys, these lights are amazing. I really do love them. So working with the 80, I'm going to turn the modeling lamp off. So you can have a rest, and they can see me. Because <laughs> I think it's affecting the white balance on one of the cameras. But literally now, you can now start working around with modifiers. So with the 8300, I'm going to go back into setting up some low-key type images. And I'm going to use different modifiers like, well, actually, before we even do that, should I use one of these? Now, these you see at wedding receptions and you see it. I've actually used this in studio for doing the same type of thing as we're doing with a bare bulb. But what it does, it softens the shadows a little bit more. So I think it, you know what? <laughs> Let's stick it on. I think I think my my cable has, has traveled down my arm somewhere. <laughs> oh, right, let me just get that microphone up there. All right, so we've now got the MLC-15. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys, who's used this modifier on, a, on an event? So there must be somebody out there that's used it. Ah, you use it for studio? Yeah, no, it's an awesome modifier. Really is. I think this uh, microphone is really giving me a nonsense here. Okay, so I could literally point this modifier. Which lighter? Which camera am I on? Okay, I could literally point this modifier probably anywhere in studio, and I'll get a perfect exposure. This thing shoots lights out the back, out the side, out the front. It gives a beautiful, even light. And even if you're actually shooting stock in like hotel rooms or even property photography, I think these things will work absolutely amazing. Right, let's check. I'm going to really blast you with some more power. Yeah, let's try half power on this one. Let's see what we get. There's a soft there. And we can even bring it in closer. Questions? Everybody still there? Yeah. Right. Let me take another shot here. And literally, you can see the line of the shadows are going to be a lot softer when we're using this modifier. They're not so sharp around the edge of the shadow. So these things are actually great. Also using a studio. So even if you have a speed light and put one of these things on your speed light, you're going to get some awesome images against any sort of background or white wall or anything there. Right. Let's try something else. Now we're going to go to the more dark and moody 
because I think uh, she, we've blasted Jean-Marie with a lot of lights. <laughs> Don't want to get him headaches or anything. So, who's used the snoot for portraiture? Okay, so I've got the SN4. This is the SN4, okay. This is the 8400 reflector. And because it has a Godox mount, it will fit on my 8300. So I'm going to put that in and put the 8400 reflector straight onto the 8300. This is what I love about Godox. You can mix and match and put things in and, oh, and put all those type of things on. So we're going to get this light. And I'm going to put the modeling lamp on. Just come a little bit more forward because I want to get a little bit. That's fine. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, so I've got a snoot. It's got the grid on. I'm just going to literally feather it across Jean's face here. Or Jean-Marie, or Jean. <laughs> and we're going to get a reflector board because there will be a lot of shadow. Okay. So this is like doing things different. Instead of having a snoot in the front and getting a model, just run some snoot light across the face and it gives you a different effect, gives you nice. And because we are controlling the light spread, the background, even though she's quite close to the wall, the background will be dark. So. Yeah. And that, the light that's bouncing back in against the wall there. So it's created a gradient because it's bouncing off the actual reflector across the actual wall there. So just turn your head towards. Okay, so we've got some dark images and you can literally use your polyboard as a, almost like a zoom. So if we bring this in even closer, We don't have we don't have camera four anymore, so we can't really go up there. And then just change your angle slightly, get that reflector in, just create some different type of looks. It's just creating different moody looks, and that's using a suit just off to the side brushing across the model's face and just creating a bit of a bit of difference in the image so these are the type of things you can sort of mess around and experiment with another modifier for the 8300 the adr14 great set great kit to buy it comes with gels comes with a grid this is a 50 degree grid if i'm not mistaken yep. Put that in. I'm going to just turn the modeling light off so you don't get zapped. Okay, I'm just going to put that on there. Oh, maybe you can hold that for me. This morning it was actually holding it just fine. <laughs> All right, so we put this on. So this is a bit of a wider a wider sort of uh, reflector which will give us a lot more spread of light so I'm going to put the modeling lamp on again now you can see how much more light is actually spreading across Jean-Marie and she's feeling it <laughs> so I'm going to take another shot also in this position <laughs> and we can see how different this is going to look see how bright and light that is so we can actually take this down, probably a stop. So I'm probably got this on about quarter power now. Just creating slightly bit more spread of light 
using using the reflectors. So, any questions out there? Any any questions? Anything that's actually nothing? Everyone still there? How many people have, have we got online? Eh? Eighteen. Eighteen. Cool. So we're we're almost getting to that five thousand people watching Godox TV. <laughs> right. So let's look at let's look at another reflector that I've or another modifier that I actually have for. I've got everything in the front here that I was going to use. So literally, if I disappear out of camera, it's because I'm getting stuff. Okay. This is, as I said earlier, this softbox, I also use at a beauty dish as well. So it comes with the beauty dish attachments inside that you can actually put inside. This double diffuse, so you've got the diffuser inside, you've got this, but it does have where you can use it as a beauty dish. And it is really awesome. I really like this. I've also got the uh, AD S85S. So that's the silver reflector, the 85 mil. Let me just get this back on. Question. Tethering cables. Tethering cables, is there any real difference? The only tethering cables I use is, I think it's called Tether Pro. Um, it does make a difference because I have tried cheaper, cheaper alternatives and I was always getting a lot of failures, um, quite a lot of failures on, on images going through. So if you are going to use tethering cables, then you can actually get Tether Pro. And I think they they do those at Orms. I think I think it's one of our reselling partners of Godox SA. Right. One thing I like about these soft boxes is they are collapsible. They are quick to set up. They are amazing light sources, as well as the different options you get. It also comes with a grid, so that's included in this thing. So it's like real value for money. And you can get those at godox.co.za. I think Talia is probably pushing up the the bat. Oof. I'm going to turn that off before I blind you. <laughs> That's cool. All right, so softbox modifiers, great. This is a Godox mount. So this isn't a Bowens mount, even though I've got the S2 bracket actually on the stand. I'm just going to pick this up before it gets kicked. Even though I've actually got the, the S2 brackets on, this softbox is a Godox. The nice thing about having the S2 brackets, you can use either or, quick interchangeable, and that's what I like, having these things on my stands all the time in studio, so I can work and do some cool things. Right. Question. Would you advise someone with a 850 to with that beauty dish as a base for strobies? Well, I've, I used the beauty dish with a T, TT600. Ooh. Vroom. So, uh, which camera am I on? Tell you this one. Okay, so this was the flash I actually used. This one here. If I can find, there you can see. Can you see that? Yeah, the TT600. So this is the flash I actually used with this beast of a beauty dish. So remember, whatever light is actually hitting the dish inside here, it's actually then going to evenly put out the light around. So if you've even got an 860 or an 850 or a TT600, the beauty dish will still work. It still sends the light out without a problem. Okay, has that answered the question? Did that answer the question? Cool. So, what I'm going to do here, I'm also going to feather the light with this softbox. So we're going to literally, I'm going to show you first how much light actually spreads from a 65 centimeter. Let me just move this quickly. 
I'm going to try and get through as much as I can because there's like really so much you can actually do with lights. All right. I'm just going to lift this up slightly. So I'm going to take a wide shot. So it's not really going to be a posed shot. Cool. It's not really going to be a pose shot, but she's going to pose because I know Jean-Marie, she always likes to pose. <laughs> she's an awesome model. And and uh, what we'll do is also we'll make sure we put up your social media details in the comments and stuff. And right. So I'm going to now put the modeling lamp on. All right, let's just go back into there, select that, modeling lamp on. So it's only on 50%, so it's quite cool. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take a wide shot just to show you how much this light actually spreads because I think people are a bit, I might have to stand back. Okay, and right. That is how much light spread you get on a ADS-65. That is a lot of light. Eh? Literally, it's straight down and straight up, you've got light. So literally, you can feather this box. You can turn this modifier. I work in a roundabout there, and I can Tip it even down and probably get that. And tighten everything there, tight. I think we literally will get you light pointing it almost back at the photographer. So if you can see where the position of this light is, it's literally almost pointing back at me and I don't have my lens or main thing on the front here, let's see. So we got some cool, I'm going to think I'm going to even pump this one even a bit more there, give it a bit more punch. Remember what I said, don't be scared to actually move around. Look at me, Jean-Marie. Okay, just turn your body towards me. Don't be scared to move around and take shots of the model. Because just look upwards, so you're looking up. Okay, cool, keep it there. Just up a little bit more. So just working, walking around, even though you have the lights in the one position, don't be scared to move around and get the different looks you can with the one light. And you can do it with one light because you just have one light and that's all you have to worry about actually catching. So this is not even pointing at Jean-Marie and we're getting beautiful light across the face and everything else. And we do have a grid for this. I'm just a sucker for grids. <laughs> right. I think every every soft box except for my 60, I think it's the 60 by 90s. That doesn't have grids. But everything else does. And you get to learn to put these on very quickly. Right. Just look at the light there. I'm going to actually dial this one down because now we're more direct. Just to give us also a gradient actually on the background so one light 
you can either exclude a background one light you can actually include a background so you can actually create a gradient on the back and use one light for two purposes so you light in the subject and actually light in the background to whatever you want to actually do and that so also another thing if you are working with a grid and say for instance i turn it this way and i tell you jean marie can you see any white on the soft box if you turn your head can you see any white Tiny not a lot so that means with the grid on she will not be lit up or very very little light will actually let me just come and stand here so yeah not a lot mm -hmm. so just to show you and prove a point let's put it there there's no light coming on to you because we've got the grid and it's very little light tell so just bring that one up Okay, so if you actually look at the image that's on the screen, literally there's no light. So literally, if she cannot see any white patches through a grid, the light's not going to hit her and she won't be lit up. So this, remember that when working with grids, if you're going to feather, make sure the model can actually see the white squares and stuff in the, in the thing. Any questions? Let me go back onto camera three. What is it, camera three? Okay, so I think there's one last modifier. Is there any questions before I move on? I'm just going to move on to a different modifier just now. Any questions? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So how long are we running for now? <laughs> okay. One hour and seven minutes. Okay, well, I've got one last modifier that I actually want to use. And I've actually used this for portraits. I've used this for all sorts of things. And the nice thing about this deep reflector is the light is very much more concentrated. The deeper the dish, the more concentrated light comes out. If it was a shallower one, it was spread out a lot more. But this one actually gives a nice deep, well, not focused light, but more directional light. And this is what I'm going to use. I'm actually going to mimic what I normally do with the projection unit. So I'm going to use this, two boards. And I think, I think I don't know if you've seen the post that I had where Jean-Marie was standing against the background and she was doing this. And we had this beautiful shadow behind. Yeah. So literally what we're going to try and do, we're going to try and mimic that by using an 8300 and this with two boards. So we try and do that one. Okay. Right, I'm going to want you probably to stand. I'm just trying to think with this camera. Yeah, stand over that wall there. Okay. Any questions while I'm getting getting the lights set up? Just doing this one more sort of shot that we're going to do. Uh, where is my release? Oh, nice bright modeling lamp. Let's turn that off there. Okay, so that, this one. If you're interested in the, looking at these, this is the ADS65W. This is the white interior. You can get the 65S, which is the silver interior. And you're probably going to ask, well, what is the difference between a white and a silver one? I'm sure they're going to ask that. I'm just going to move this one out the way. Is anyone asking that? Or should I just tell you? So the white one is of much more sort of softer light. And I found, well, I found with the 165 umbrellas, with the white, to, between the white and the actual silver one, there's probably about one stop difference even. So I had a lot more light um, coming out from the silver than I did from the actual white and when I was testing with it. And obviously your silver is a much more specular light than, than the actual white. So... What I'm going to do, I don't know if maybe get on to camera number two.
Okay, so literally now I'm going to be shooting down this way. I'm going to put two boards up next to each other just with a bit of space. Put the light actually behind the actual boards and hopefully we can get a nice... So I'm going to point the black inside. I just found it much better because with the light coming through, I don't want it bouncing. I'd rather have light bouncing back this way. And only the light that I want going through. Can everyone still see? Okay. So literally we've got, I'm going to position these. I'm going to put the modeling lamp on. Uh, where is the modeling lamp? There we are. And I'm just going to get this into position. Jean-Marie, can you just step back a little bit so your heels are almost touching the, the gray? Or maybe I should lift the gray up. And also, while I'm on the background, if you want backgrounds, golden power batteries. This is where I get my background papers. And uh, you can also use my code there, which is GPBKJD. And you can score yourself discounts at golden power batteries. This is where I get my background. So let's use the white. Okay. All right, so we've got Jean-Marie. She's looking awesome as usual in her position there. So I'm just going to position these boards to make sure I've got my light. Okay, maybe just a little bit forward. Okay. So I don't know if we can switch back to camera, this camera here. Okay. So obviously I'm in this bright light and so I've got two boards that are actually set up with a gap in the middle and I might even see if I can get a shot in between these. You can probably just see Jean-Marie at the back there and she's in the light. I just want to see if I can move this camera. Let me just go onto camera. The other camera again so we're seeing the side view so i'm going to try and move the other camera so you can actually see what is actually going on behind there because the way jean marie is just holding that pose like a true dancer <laughs> in bay you're not seeing exactly what's cutting and what's going on there so let me see if i can get this i'm going to try and see if i can firstly move the camera Yeah, do we have, can we see the, this one also make sure we can see the boards. Okay, there you go. So literally what we've got, I'm also, I can speak on both cameras there. Okay, I'm going to speak on this camera. So literally we've got Jean-Marie there. You can see the strip of light that is actually there. It's not going to be as crisp as a projection unit. Okay, so literally this is going to be just two poly boards that we're going to shoot through. Okay, so you find there, Jean. You, you're looking awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to move my cable here. I'm going to step over this side, out of the way of the camera. Right, so this, as I said, I normally do this with my projection unit, and I'm going to pump this light, actually. I'm going to probably take it up to half power. and shoot it through. Well, that is very bright. So that just shows you the power of this 8300. <laughs> right, let's bring it down to about, let's try one eighth power. Okay, so we're pretty much getting there. If you see, just bring up the images there, Tali. Um, so.
So literally, as you can see, the edges are not as sharp and defined on the uh, question. Okay, so these flats, well, they're not really V flats as such. I mean, as photographers, we like to make sure we can be creative. So these are actually poly boards that I got from a hardware. And I'll just see what camera I'm on here. Tara, put me onto this camera. Camera, put me onto camera two. Okay, so these are actually poly boards. So literally, they are 50 mil poly boards. You get these from your suppliers, and these are pretty much the standard size. So I think the only thing I did was cut a piece off the top, um, and that, and that was it. So painted the one side black, so you can just paint matte black, and then leave the other side white, and that's what I use in studio. So let me just move this back out the way, and I'm just going to move the other camera back into place. Tanya, just take that one off. I'm just going to move that camera. Okay. So, there you can actually do, there you can actually do almost like what I do. Bring that image across, Tanya, it's fine. So, there you can actually do those images. I'm going to look at this camera now. So, you can do those images quite easily just with two boards or anything. So even if you use two doors, even if you buy two doors from a hardware, paint one side black, one side white, I think Craig uses doors. And then I literally build up a little foot frame to actually hold them. And that is it. I think Craig has his on wheels. I must put mine on wheels. That's a good idea. So doing that with one light, we've created almost like what we get with the projection unit. I'm going to turn this modeling lamp off because it's bright. So I think, that's, uh, I think that's about it. I hope everybody enjoyed what, what was going on here. Um, if you have any questions, please even put them in the comments and everything else, and I will definitely get back to you. I will go through all the comments and everything, obviously, afterwards. Um, and if there's anything you need to know, get hold of me on my social media profiles, which I'll also put in the comments, and uh, I will be gladly help you out in what I was using, what to do, where to start. But hopefully this video is giving you that, um, that uh, starting point. So I think that's all I have time for. Any other questions that will come in? No, no questions there? Nothing? Okay, guys. So thanks for watching, and we will be online again soon. Get into grips. We'll be doing a whole lot of other stuff. I think I've also had some requests for even showing them a very simple setup for e-commerce. So literally three lights shooting e-commerce pack shots very quickly, efficiently, and uh, yeah, so I may also do a live show probably around that. And then I will do some other bits and pieces in between just to keep the content coming out for you guys. So yeah, I think that's it. And awesome. So thanks a lot. And awesome. And we would definitely, look, we'll definitely keep in touch. I will also make sure that... Uh, I've actually friended everybody was also on the chat and everything, and I'll check on the YouTube tire side as well. Thanks again, and we'll see you again soon online. Thanks for watching. Leave studio. <laughs>